Hi, this is Chris from Proveal. I'm talking today with Jenica McDavid uh, from Psychology for Photographers. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of how I came across her stuff, and I'm just going to let her talk about psychology because it's stuff that I don't really know, but she knows very, very well. Um, she's got a couple of uh, ebooks out right now and is working on one uh, that should be releasing really soon uh, that I think apply directly to what we do here at Preveal and, and what our, our users are doing and, and things that can help them quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to stop talking for a second and pass it over to Jenica and, uh, and just talk about, you know, I, I think the first time, first of all, sorry, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the first thing that I came cr across of yours was your free ebook, which I wrote down the name because I always just call it the, the client money ebook. It's a, uh, how clients make decisions about money, and um, the the first two points in particular, I felt uh, really applied to what it was. It actually made me really excited when I was reading it because I think that uh, it's a direct correlation to what it is that we do at Preveal. Uh, so I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit about that and and just a little bit about what you do and, and your background and and uh, you know what it is that, that you do at Psychology Photographers. Sure, sure. So. Um... Just a really quick bit of background is that I have a master's degree in psychology. I studied it for a long time. I wanted to be a psychology professor and then realized it wasn't the path for me, but I still feel strongly that what we learn from psychology research is applicable and useful in everyday situations. So those, the two points that Chris was just referring to, um, like a lot of psychology things, some people hear that and they're like, oh, that's so obvious. but um, even if it is obvious to you, it might not be applied in a way that you'd thought of before. And sometimes even simply being able to label and articulate something is still useful. So um, anyway, so there, the, the two points are one thing um, that people in general have, I guess, kind of an interesting quirk of our thinking is that we don't, we always prefer known options over ambiguous options, right? Like if you go on vacation somewhere and you know it's awesome, uh, and you stay at a certain hotel and you really liked it, you want to stay at that hotel if you go back again because you know it's great and there's really no reason to try the one down the street. And that's an issue for photographers because you have people coming in who have bought 4x6s, 5x7s, and 8x10s their whole lives at Walmart, and you're trying to get them to buy a 20x30. Um, and so that's an ambiguous thing, and it's a costly mistake if they buy it and don't like it. So uh, one of the things that Preveal helps people do is reduce the ambiguity of whether or not they're going to like it. So um, I actually, I used to Photoshop pictures onto like virtual walls, for, and it took forever, but it was really worth the time. And so when I heard about Preveal, my brain exploded because I was like, this is just genius, <laughs> and it really, it really works with what, with how people think, and it's gonna, it saves, gonna save me a lot of time and make my clients happier. So I'm really stoked about that. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I found interesting, and this may, I, I felt like a lot of the points in there, um, they they transition really well one into the next. They overlap a little bit. Uh, and one of the things I thought was interesting is, you know, to use your example of the hotel, um, you know, you typically you're going to go back to something that's known because, hey, I went there before and I enjoyed it before. Um, even if you have other people or if you have other proof that maybe the one down the street is actually better, uh, but you don't, you don't, we're so afraid to mm -hmm. take that chance that I might be wrong. Uh, and, you know, to bring it back to wall art is I'm so used to 8x10s because that's what, what my mom got of me from my high school, you know, from my, my school pictures or whatever, that even if you tell me that a 20x30 would look better or that this, you know, a canvas print is actually better, that we're hesitant still to do that without having more things to push us over the edge to help us visualize that to help us uh, to help us imagine that in our lives uh, in a more uh, concrete way. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and directly underpinning that is this: just in general, humans are what's called loss averse. We don't like losing things. We really don't like losing things. In fact we have more of an emotional reaction to losing something than we have to gaining something. Like, we really, really don't like losing. And so uh, when if someone bought a 20 by 30 and the, they hated it, it would feel m emotionally more strongly than missing out on the good part of it would feel to them. Yep. So, yeah. And uh, related to that was this, the second point that Chris talked about at the beginning, 
was that uh, people like things they've experienced before. And this is this is one of the best psychological studies that's ever been done because I think it shows a sense of humor. This guy uh, showed a bunch of people some just Chinese characters that were actually meaningless. They were just Chinese styled, and the people didn't speak Chinese. And and then he had them rate how positive or negative he, they thought these random characters were, and people rated the ones they've seen before and uh, seen before as more positive, which makes no sense because it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, uh, it's totally random, but just the fact they've seen it before meant they liked it. So, uh, and that's uh, that happens in a lot of things. We like. I mean, that's why people pound in so many lawn signs uh, during election time. Uh, there really is something to that. So um, mm-hmm. that's what I like about Preveal is that it familiarizes people with these new options before you, you know, spend the money on printing them. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, and that is a free ebook. And this is me telling you guys listening to this. That's a free ebook that you absolutely have to get your hands on. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, one of the other ones that, that I also got and just kind of poured my way through, I'm serious, it sounds like I'm sitting here and just saying like, oh, hey, she's great and you should get her stuff, but she's great and you should get her stuff. Um, the, uh, the second book is uh, and it's, it's about building an irresistible website. Uh, and it is not free, but it is worth every penny. Um, and it's absolutely phenomenal. I, in fact, I kind of... Um, you and I have talked about this before, uh, not in this kind of setting, but that I felt like it's actually so much more than building an irresistible website. This It is phenomenal at helping you figure out exactly who your target client is and then how to speak to that client and how to attract that client. And yes, that definitely applies in uh, in the design of your website, but I think that, that that book does so much more for small business owners. And I think We've talked about this too, that your reach is so much bigger than just photographers. It's really for startups and small business owners. And that book does so much more in helping you figure out exactly who it is that you uh, want to target and exactly who it is that you want to to work with um, and to build really your business more than just your website, your business in such a way to attract those people. It's an absolutely phenomenal ebook. Um, and I figure I'll let you talk a little bit about that, and then I, I do want to talk a little bit about what you're working on next, because anything that you put out, I'm going to be into. So. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, there is a still website ebook. The goal was to show photographers how to tailor their website to the people they most want to hire them. So you're not marketing to just everybody in the tri-state area. You're marketing to the people who you truly want to be working with. Related to that is just figuring out who are these people, uh, what do they respond to, and how can you tailor your website content to speak to just them. Um, so the first section, it's, it's more of a, I call it a workshop in ebook form because it, it's not you just sitting reading, you have to um, do some work, but it's the kind of work that a lot of people don't do, so if you do it, you're, it kind of automatically sets you apart. Um, but you you take the time to go through, and I and I explain how to do it. Um, setting up who you think your target client is, what who who are they as a person, what what books do they read, what kind of language do they use in everyday conversation, what makes them excited, what do they aspire to, and then the second half of the book is devoted to showing how you can adjust your web content to be really exciting for that person and make them feel like yes, this person is exactly who I want as my photographer. I'm not even gonna look at anybody else. Yeah, that's kind of the overall arch. I think one of the things I found interesting about that, because you know we've done a ton of this stuff, we've done a lot of this uh, defining your target market and and demographics and all of that, and and I really enjoyed that this digs deeper into the emotional side of who your client is, and uh, and maybe even more so what we do and how we can solve problems for them, because I I think that we don't really think about that that often is that. You know, we think that, um, and, and I'm actually, I'm going to swipe this directly from Jason Aiton, who I think is absolutely brilliant uh, on the sales side of, side of photography. And he talks about um, that we don't solve a I need pictures problem. You know, people don't come to us because I just need pictures of my family or I need pictures of my wedding. Uh, he says, and I, and I firmly agree with, we solve a I want to remember how I feel problem. 
Uh, people come to us because they want to remember the way that they feel right now. Um, and then you dig in even deeper in your book as far as uh, more practical problems. Uh, you know, and, and then taking your website and taking your message and tailoring that to uh, you know, each page to answering how you're going to solve those practical problems for them. Uh, I just think it's fantastic. I, and I don't want this to sound like uh, one big commercial for, hey, buy Jenica's stuff. But uh, really get in there, dig in. Uh, the blog obviously is all free. It's phenomenal mm -hmm. information. Uh, and I just, I, I really wanted to take some time and introduce people who maybe haven't heard of your stuff to what you're doing. Um, and then also just let you kind of talk about what you're working on next. And because I personally am interested in it, and I think that if I'm interested in it, then the people who uh, who are using Perfil will be also. So tell me a little bit more about uh, what you're doing. What you're doing next? Yeah, I I have wanted for a long time to teach a writing class to photographers, and I know the minute that I say writing class, people shut down <laughs> because. Nobody likes writing. The people who do like writing are nuts about it and are already into it. And then people who kind of are wishy-washy about it or just feel frustrated and they have flashbacks to sweaty eighth grade, horrible chalkboard memories that heaven knows what. And I, one of my my friends and mentors said, writing is the redheaded stepchild of a photography business. It's just nobody cares about it. Um, but I care quite a, a, a big, a whole lot about it. Um, and the reason is, when, when you, if you think about, okay, let me put it this way. If you go to the gym, right, you can sit there and do 100 curls. You can sit there and do 100 squats. You can sit there and do 100 lunges. But there's these sort of compound movements that, you know, personal trainers often push where you're doing a lunge and a curl at the same time. You're exercising the whole body, not just sitting and doing one thing over and over. And people often compartmentalize things in the photography business. You have to learn about marketing, you have to learn about SEO, and you have to learn about websites, and you have to buy a hundred different products that teaches you how to do all these different things. It's extremely overwhelming to people. Writing helps you with all of those things. It is a universal skill. It helps you market. It helps you do social media. It helps you communicate with other business owners. It helps you write grant applications. It helps you, I mean, literally, there are very few tasks aside from photography. Uh, you know, communicating with clients, calming clients, uh, managing expectations, all these buzzwords that you hear, uh, if you write well, it will simultaneously improve everything across the board. Those things, yep. and, and so I taught this class, and I, I opened a small course. I just wanted to see how people would respond. It sold out two days before registration was supposed to close. Everybody wanted more. Um, and so I decided, to, because I know um, I can only offer so much one-on-one -on -one coaching, there's only 24 hours in a day, I've decided to release... Um, what's called the Irresistible Words course, um, so that you can uh, learn at your own pace and also have emails guide you through uh, the course to just improve your writing, which will, I think it's honestly one of the most monetizable skills. You always hear people don't make money in writing, but that's just, you can, if you write well in business, you can make a lot of money. Um, and I think it's a great skill to have. Yeah, no, no, I, I think that's fantastic. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, how it's actually set up? Because it's not really ebook form, right? It's it's kind of this uh, blended uh, course slash ebook slash magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> magic, that's a good word. It's set up in in four weeks, so you don't do it all at once. Because if you did, you'd probably want to cry and run away just because people don't like sitting and like taking in all this information all at once. So it's set up in four weeks. You can do one chunk a week. It's very manageable, and uh, there's a little exercise each week that you can do to get better. So if you buy it when it comes out next week, October 23rd, um, you'll be writing much better before Thanksgiving. Uh, but the way it's set up is the first half teaches you how to connect more with clients, and a big part of that is something I've pushed on the blog, which is being more concrete in your writing. Um, I go into a lot more detail about how to do that. But um, there's something... One of there's a social psychologist who wrote about the idea of being concrete and how that impacts people. Um, he was talking about how traffic accidents are reported, and he said, you know, if you write a story about someone who got in an accident, you say, oh, they sustained injuries in an auto accident. People are like, oh, well, that's just too bad. But if you say, you know, a semi-trailer rolled over and crushed his legs, 
and get very concrete about what happened, suddenly people will be all up in arms. They want to, you know, pass seatbelt laws and they want to pass drunk driving laws and they want to take action more in response to concrete things than vague things. Um, which is, it's the same thing that Prevail does, is it just makes these things go from vague to concrete and makes people want to take action. Um, and then the second part of the book is devoted to sales writing, um, which I know a lot of people feel really skeezy and hesitant, and this doesn't sound like me, but I, I show how to do it in a way that feels more natural and, and makes you feel like you're really solving people's problems. So it's kind of a two-part course. It's split up into four weeks. And you also, um, there's, an, there's email support that you can sign up for to get reminder emails because sometimes you start something with good intentions and then you get busy and forget. And so this is, it, it'll have some built-in gentle pushes for you to go on to the next thing and to keep it up. And there's also going to be some uh, bonus interviews in those emails with some people that I really admire. So this is good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I just wanted to kind of talk about that. It, it, is there anything else, like any resources, anything else you want to kind of point people to, um, or uh, maybe blog post things that you're like, hey, this is a great place to start if you're gonna if you're going to come to the blog and try to start getting acquainted with what it is that I do. Oh, sure, sure. Um, hmm. There's um, there's a post that I wrote called the Seven Minute Website Writing Makeover um, that I think if you're looking to improve your writing is a is a very good one to try out, to try your hand at. Um, and then I also have over in the sidebar a thing that says, um, I think it says rec things I recommend or favorite posts. I can't remember what I called the category now. I'm blanking. But um, if you click on that, that has the most, oh, I think it's called popular posts. It has the most popular posts that I got a lot of good feedback on. So those would be a good place to start. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for taking the time to, to talk with me today. And uh, the website is psychologyforphotographers.com. Uh, and seriously, get if anything, get that freebie. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, and I think you'll do the same thing that I did. You'll jump in on that and be like, whatever else she has, I need it. Uh, so go check that out. And uh, again, <laughs> thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah, you too.